What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training. It's today we're going to be breaking down how wide receivers can mess with a DB's mind. So we're going to be talking about the specific things that you can do to pair your releases off the line of scrimmage together and keep that DB always on his toes and always guessing, okay? So now, first release you're going to be discussing is this slide release. So this slide release is something that a lot of DB coaches teach that, oh, okay, anytime that you see a wide receiver slide to the outside, change up the tempo, you want to sit to the inside every single time because you want to expect what? You want to expect expect the slam. Now, this specific clip, we get him with a slam, but we're going to be talking about today how this can build and how you can make your routes look similar. So what he does, he slides off that line, gives him that one, two, crosses over and gets that DB outside the platform, right? Gets him to move off the platform. So why does this work? So when we slide to the outside, anytime that you guys are doing a slide release like this, you want to make sure that you are attacking vertical. What a lot of wide receivers do, and this is why your routes don't build off of each other, is because obviously we want to be able to turn this same release into an outside release. When turn the same release into like a fade into a comeback into maybe like a 10 yard out whatever it is but it has to look the same and a lot of guys what they don't do is they don't threaten the db vertical they'll go lateral they'll slide and they will go straight lateral and the problem with that is that that db is never threatened by that he can just shuffle with you all day long if you're going lateral what this receiver does a great job of is he uses that little prep step with his front foot and he pushes and he's attacking him he's actually getting into his cushion and actually attacking him almost on like a 45 degree angle that's what makes him think vertical because now what he sets up off of that is that crossover move, right? So now when I use that crossover move, what does this look like? This looks exactly like a fade. Hips and shoulders are all committed. He's stepping outside the frame. He's actually on an angle off the line where that's going to threaten the DB and actually going to threaten him to open his hips. That's what we want to get to ultimately, okay? So now, what a DB is going to do, a smart DB, is maybe the next time that he sees this slide release, he's going to want to sit to the inside. A lot of DB coaches say, like, hey, you see him slide? Just sit there. Sit to the inside. But as a wide receiver, how I can mess with his mind is I could run a fade route. I could go run a comeback route with the exact same release and the exact same steps and the exact same angle off the line to mess with his head and keep him on his toes. Because when we can get in a DB's head and we can live up there, it, it, it's very, very hard for him to make plays because he doesn't know what we're doing constantly. He can never guess. And he's going to guess wrong. Wrong more often than he is going to guess right. So I'm going to play at full speed, then we'll get to the clip of him actually running a fade, same receiver, same situation on the goal line, and how we can get that DB to guess. So he does a great job of sliding, attacking on the 45. That is the most important thing, and we have to have to threaten him vertically. Okay, so now, second clip, same idea, goal line situation, inside shade DB, but now we are running a fade. So how does this work specifically, and how can it build off the first release? But before we get into this, fellas, I want to talk to you about a great opportunity fellas we are doing this off season we are traveling out to eight different cities across the u.s for two day long quarterback and wide receiver training camp so we really excited to get out to these different states we're coming out to houston texas newark new jersey atlanta georgia columbus ohio chicago illinois dallas texas nashville tennessee and los angeles california so if you guys are local to one of those eight cities we would absolutely love to have you out we love our youtube community we'd love to have you out to one of our camps again very first link in the description below fellas that that's where all the information is located. And I honestly wouldn't even call these camps. These are more like clinics, right? Because we're limiting spots. Our, our goal is not to come out there and get as many kids as possible. Our goal is to get kids out there who want to get better, who like what we do, who support the brand, and we can help them get better for two whole days. We're only limiting spots to 10 to 12 guys per position group, per age group. So it's a small scale thing. We're not having 100, 200 kids out there if that's what a lot of people worry about. And that's what a lot of people get at these camps. And it's so wrong. And that's not how you learn. The best way to train is with a lot of detailed one-on-one -on -one coaching where we break down the mistakes that you do and explain to you how to get better, okay? So if you're looking for something like that this offseason and you're local to one of these eight cities, like I said, very first link below, we'd love to have you out to one of our off-season camps. Let's get back to this video. So now, how do we pair this thing together, right? So now, if I ran that slant route, guarantee you next time that DB sees you work that slide release, he's going to be thinking about it, okay? He's going to be thinking, oh, okay, if he slides to the outside, oh, I'm not getting beat with that again. I'm going to sit to the inside. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm not going to jump to the fade because anytime that he slides outside, he's trying to move me off the platform so we could slip back underneath. And that's why, fellas, your angle is so important off the line because if you could threaten him vertical, that's what's more likely to get him to move, right? But now if we can threaten him vertically, but he's sitting to the inside trying to guess, guess what that opens up? That opens up the fades. So let's watch this thing full speed. So he slides to the outside. DB's staying disciplined. He wants to play the slant. He sees that slide release, and you see what he's doing. He is not moving off the platform. He's sitting right there. He's thinking he will not beat me on a slant. I am keeping my leverage to the inside. I will not give it up. And that's exactly what we want as a wide receiver. Again, you have to make your routes look the same. 
That's how you're unpredictable. A lot of people ask, like, coach, how can I get more separation? How could I do this? How could I get open? You pair your routes together and make your movements look the exact same so a DB can't prepare for you in a game situation, in a practice situation, or on film. A good DB is going to see this on film. If you every time you have to run a slant, you use this slide release, a good DB is going to be like, okay, every time he does that slide, he goes inside. But imagine on film, if you had 20 different plays of where you did a slide release and you hit him with a crossover move and you ran a slant and then a slide release and you hit him with a move to the inside and ran a fade, he can't prepare for that. He's thinking, man, well, you know what? I just have to trust my technique, watch his hips and just, you know, hope I play this thing correctly. And that's what we want as a wide receiver because then the mechanics of the movement, me stepping outside his frame, me throwing my hip, that can get me separation because now this DB is sitting to the inside and what do I do? I throw my hip to the inside. I'm stepping outside outside of his frame, just like the last clip. Hips and shoulders are committed. That gets him to sit on the slant because he has no other choice. He has to trust the hips. He has to trust his technique. And when we can get him to trust his technique and sit to the inside like this, this opens up a ton of space for me on the fade. Why do you think Devontae Adams is such a good route runner? Because this is what he does. He is not doing complicated movements. He is not doing like all these 100 different moves that you see everybody glorifying seven on seven and one on ones. He's doing efficient movement. He's doing a hezzy skip to the outside. DB jumps. I hit him with a crossover. I do a hezzy skip. He sits to the inside. I go dust him on a fade. And I guarantee you there are probably plays where he has options to do either one, where they're just like, okay, it's man coverage. Okay, we could either do a slant here. Or we could do a fade. It's whatever he plays, and I'm a, and Rodgers will trust him, and they read him. I guarantee you they have that in their offense because of how unpredictable he is and how hard to stop he is because DBs can't get a read on him. Everything looks the same at a certain point, and that's what you guys have to understand. Let's watch the thing again full speed one more time. A great job by this wide receiver making the slide look the same, now threatening him to the inside when that DB wants to guess it, and then creating that space back to the fade. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to um, leave that in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback, and it's always great to hear from you guys, and any kind of video suggestion is much, much appreciated from you guys. And again, fellas, we're traveling out to eight different cities across the U.S. We're coming to Houston, Newark, Atlanta, Columbus, Chicago, Dallas, Nashville, and Los Angeles. So we'd love to have you out to one of our off-season camps. If you guys are in the area or local to, or want to travel out or local to one of those areas, we'd, like I said, love to have you out. Very first link in the description below. It's a four-hour camp each day, so it's going to be a lot of work. So I hope you guys are ready to work if you come out to one of those camps. So again, really appreciate you guys. I'll see you next time.